seeing me. I'm okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to class today. I am recording here live at the Silhouette headquarters in Linden, Utah, and I'm excited to be here to teach this class and be here with you to craft with our silhouettes. And we're going to make a really fun Christmas card today. Um, I'm part of the Michaels uh, 12 Days of Card Making. Um, little series and today we'll be making this cute little bobblehead santa card he is so much fun because when you move his head he wiggles and we've added little googly eyes to him so he's just a really fun project in fact this is such a fun technique you can use it with um, lots of different cards um, i have a huge series of uh, bobblehead cards in the silhouette design store and um, in my shop, I'll sh give you, I'll, I'd like to show you some of those. Um, we'll do that here in just a minute. First of all, I wanna make sure everybody gets the class files downloaded. So they are free in the Silhouette store right now. I'm gonna um, share my screen with you so that you can follow along where to find those. As people are coming into class, um, I want you to be able to get those downloaded. If you go to the class that you signed up for, there's a nice, um, supplies list here and down at the very bottom it tells you the design id number for the card and the envelope they're both free in the silhouette store today or this this week so i'll take you into the silhouette store right now if you'll follow along with me just here at the home page of silhouette the silhouette design store you can go up to the free tab up here at the very top and just down here you'll see the Santa card right here. You'll just click on that. Go ahead and download that for free. And back on that free page, if you go down a little bit farther, there's an envelope right here. It's got a darling little scallop edge to it. That's also free this week in the design store. So go grab those two files, get them downloaded in, into your Silhouette uh, library. Um, so let's just take a look really quick at some other bobblehead cards. I've got a nice series uh, for Christmas. I'm just gonna shut my computer here for a moment. And um, let's just take a look at these fun cards. So on this one, oops, let's see, gotta flip it the right way. We've got the Santa little legs that wobble as he's going down the chimney. Isn't he so much fun? I just love him. Let's see, we've got a cute little elf. He's really cute too. And look how fun it is when you add those googly eyes. Um, just so you know, in my files, they come with eyes that you can cut, but you can also put a little googly eye or a wiggle eye on top as well. So you have options. You don't have to buy those, but I think they just add an extra little element of fun. I mean, look how cute the little reindeer is with his little googly eyes. And we've got the snowman as well. Kids just love these cards. And you can add these um, little springs. That's what we're gonna be using today to make that little wiggle. And you can get those. Um, I noticed them in the Michaels online store, but I'm not sure about in store. I couldn't find them in my local store, but I know that they do have them online. We have some more fall ones. If you're trying to craft for fall, um, these little characters are so much fun. We've also got, some other um, birthday series, little piggy, cute little panda, happy birthday. So these, uh, some of these do have a little print and cut sentiment you'll notice on them. Today, I'm gonna show you how you can add one to the inside of your Christmas cards that we'll be making. Um, we have a lion. And there's even more. I didn't bring all of them because I didn't want this to get too lengthy with show and tell, but um, there's even more. So make sure you go check those out with the other holidays that are coming up, Valentine's. And then even after that into March, we've got a cute little leprechaun. So much fun. Okay, so I hope you guys love learning this technique. And you can even add these springs to other cards that you may have, as long as there's like a little character with enough space behind. Um, there's a couple of different sizes of springs. There's a larger size and a smaller size. Um, so just make sure you get the right size for the size of character that you're going to have on yours. And then of course, at Michael's, you can get the cute little googly eyes in different sizes. And I've got some of the smaller ones down here on the table and we may use those on Santa today, but um, these are a little bit bigger. These are actually 10 millimeter. The bigger ones are 10 millimeter and the smaller ones are probably 
eight or a seven. I'm not sure. I don't have the package on those still, but so cute. Yes. Okay, so if you don't have a silhouette machine, um, you can actually, let me share my screen with you real quick. Um, right here in the store, I've got some Zoom meeting bars in my way. I've got to move out of the way just a little bit. Um, you can click this little button right here to get that SVG file, and then you can download it. It's still free as an SVG. I also have all of these files in my store as SVGs as well, but you can get them right here um, through the Silhouette store. Okay, any other questions before we move on? Okay, so um, in order to get started, we're going to need some supplies. So let me stop sharing my screen. Um, in that class materials, it's pretty simple. You just need some Christmas colored cardstock. I've got green and red, black, I've got a little bit of glitter, which is super cute on Santa's tiny little belt buckle. Look how cute that is. So you don't have to use that. You could use yellow if you have that on hand, but um, you know, just use the scraps you have on hand. The only piece you're gonna need a little bit bigger would be like the card base, whatever you choose. Um, the samples that I have here, one has a green card base, one has a white card base. Um, I think the instructions or the materials list that I listed was for the white card base, but you can really get creative and mix and match your colors any way you would like. So let's go ahead and get into the software. Um, actually, before we um, go to the software, I do have a couple other things on my screen I wanted to share with you. First of all, it was the googly eyes here. They're called wiggle eyes actually here on the Michaels website. And then these little springs, they're Recollections brand, Craft Springs, 12 pieces, pretty inexpensive. So you can make 12 cards um, with a package of those. Um, we talked about where to get the files. I wanted to introduce you guys to my blog, just so you know that this is a great resource for you um, to learn how to put my projects together. If you find other things that you want to make. I also have a YouTube channel with all sorts of tutorials, some really fun ones for Christmas coming up and all the seasons. So make sure you go check that out. And I just wanted to make sure you know you have that as a resource. Also, the class that I'm teaching right now will be um, available in the Michaels YouTube channel or on the Michaels YouTube channel um, in 24 to 48 hours after this live recording. So you can always go over there and watch this if you can't watch the entire thing today, or if you need to rewatch something so you can catch part that you may have missed. Um, so let's go ahead and go into the software and we'll get, and we'll start cutting out our cute project. So in the library, I have gone ahead and made a folder for my uh, class today, but you will need to open up your bobblehead card. And then you'll also need to open up your envelope. And that's what the files look like when you open them. Um, this envelope was designed quite a long time ago. Um, before I was even allowed to add color to my files. So it's just a basic envelope and a liner um, with no color. So, but that's okay, it'll still cut beautifully for us. Okay, so back to our cute little card. Let's get our card and our pieces all cut out for that. So for, you'll notice when you first open it, everything is grouped together. So you'll wanna right click and ungroup those pieces. And you'll notice that sometimes it doesn't ungroup everything you want ungrouped. Right now, it looks like there's still quite a large grouping. So I'm going to right click again and ungroup one more time. Okay, so that did ungroup. You can see all those little black boxes around things. Hopefully you're able to see that. But the little black hairline around them shows you which pieces are ungrouped. So you can see Santa's face is um, all lots of little pieces. So I'm just going to scoot. I'm going to grab it all and scoot it off to the side. And we'll grab all these pieces and I'm gonna shift and click on that back piece to deselect it and move the rest of those off. So I'm just gonna set up our card base to cut and I have put my paper on my mat vertically. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this. Well, actually, what's our width? It's eight and a half exactly and I have eight and a half by 11. So I'm gonna rotate that so it'll fit. Just a little trick for you, if you would like to fit two on an eight and a half by 11, cause that sometimes is a little bit of a of wasting, you know, way to waste paper is 
you know, to put one card base on an eight and a half by 11, you can take the entire project and scale it down slightly, just a little bit, like 98%. And then you can easily fit two card bases on an eight and a half by 11. It's just a little trick that I've learned. That way you don't have to hand cut your bases, but you would need to scale everything down just a little bit because it's pretty hard to fit an eight and a half by 11, an eight inch card base on an eight inch, eight and a half piece of paper an eight and a half card base on eight and a half paper and make it fit perfectly cross. So you would probably end up cutting off on one edge or the other. So now that I've got my card base on here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the send tab up here at the top. You wanna make sure you're connected to your machine. You could easily cut this on a portrait or a cameo. Um, just make sure that that is connected. Let me, I've got a few little zoom bars on my screen. So I'm just scooting those around real quick. Sorry. Um, okay. So to our cut settings, um, you'll just want to make sure that the lines are red on your piece. If they are not red, um, it probably says like no cut or something, something's going on. So you'll want to select those pieces and go ahead and click cut. If you click cut edge, sometimes it won't cut like the score lines in the middle of the piece. So just make sure that all those lines are red and that you select the proper one to get those lines red. And then make sure you have your cardstock um, weight selected. I am using quite a heavy cardstock and I am going to go ahead and bump my blade up to a four and force it 30. And I'm gonna bump my speed up just a little bit. And we're ready to go ahead and load our paper on our mat. So let me stop sharing my screen with you. And we've got our green card based paper on our mat and I'm gonna cut it right here. So what I was talking about before is if you scale the project down slightly, you'll be able to fit two card bases across here horizontally. But if we wanna make it 100% scale like it is in the file, you'll need to cut it going this direction to get the full card base on. So we'll go ahead and line this up with the gray little, let me see those, the little arrows here on the left and that line, and just make sure that your, um, your uh, wheels or your little gripper bar grippers are in the right position. If they're not in the right position, you would use a little handle to move those around, but we've got it in the right position for eight and a half, for a 12 inch mat. So we'll go back into the software real quick. And we'll go ahead and all we need to do at this point is press send. Now it's cutting that dash line through the middle of our card. That's where we're going to fold. And then it's cutting around the edge of the card base. Okay, and I always like to test that card base, make sure it's coming off that mat easily before I unload it. And if I have a clean cut, I'll go ahead and eject it. If it's not a clean cut, I would leave it in there and send it again. Maybe even bump up the cut settings just a little bit. It will line right up if you leave it in there. Okay, so we have our card base. Perfect, with a nice little score line right in the middle. Isn't that awesome? No more hand cutting and scoring on those. That's awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and take our mat. We'll take the rest of that green paper off. You'll notice I like to use the table to hold that paper down just so I don't end up bending my paper and destroying it. It keeps a little bit um, a little bit flatter. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and cut. Let's do another piece real quick. Let's see. Um, okay, one thing, I'm not going to cut all the pieces, I'm going to let you guys do that, but let me just kind of show you what I would do. I usually move all those pieces that I've cut off to the right hand side and just bring on the pieces that I want to cut. So say I want to cut all the red pieces and I need to ungroup this one more time. So I'm going to right click and ungroup. Oh, I need to share my screen with you guys. Sorry about that. Okay, um, back to silhouette. Okay, so 
um, let me just undo what I did that you couldn't see on my screen. I'm just command Z back several times. Okay. So I, like I said, I like to move the pieces I've already cut off to the right hand side, just so I can, this is kind of how I organize myself. And then you can bring the pieces that you need to cut back, um, back onto the map. Um, and I like to cluster them in colors. So I put like the white things up in the upper left-hand corner. And you will notice that these little eyebrows are teeny tiny. If you want to eliminate those, you have my permission, but I wanted to include them because they're, they're cute. So if you don't want to mess with that or gluing them on, Santa will look perfectly fine without those eyebrows. Okay, so see how I'm grabbing all the white pieces and pulling them on and then just c collect all the black pieces together in, an, in one area. I'm going to, I would cut those on another pass. Um, and ungroup that little Santa suit piece. And he's got tiny little cuffs on him too. So don't make sure you don't lose any of these pieces because they really do make Santa look adorable. Okay, I'm gonna right click again and ungroup. There's several groupings here. So just know that if something's not coming apart, you just need to keep ungrouping. Um, if you have your hand raised in the class, could you please put your question in chat? I have Christina here um, and Kelly Waymonts on the call as well. Um, they can answer questions for you right in the chat. And if you have something you need me to answer or show on screen, please feel free to ask. I'm happy to do that. Okay, so we have all, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna cut the white pieces because there's so many little ones, but let's go ahead and put the black ones up here on the mat. But this is basically what I would do. Just go ahead and gather up each of those colors. And you can even run the red pieces and the black pieces at the same time. Um, you might need to just trim your paper down. I, if I do like a six inch by five inch, I can see um, on my ruler here, right here's five inches. And here's six inches. I would have plenty of paper to cut those black pieces. So I'm gonna trim a piece down to that. And then like a four by uh, four by five on the red. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim some paper down to those sizes real quick. And put that on our mat. Let's see, paper trimmer right here. So this is one thing I like to do just to save time at the cutting machine. Um, I'm just eyeballing it. I think that's about the size I want there. Okay, so now we have a little scrap of black and a little scrap of red. And I'm just going to go ahead and load my red over on this corner of my mat and my black on this corner. And we'll go ahead and feed this in the machine. I hope, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I've got almost five inches on the width there. So I'll go ahead and share my screen with you again. Okay, I'm gonna bring, just to make sure I don't mess up, cause I've been known to, I'm just gonna rotate him and just squeeze him in a little tighter to make sure he fits. And we should have plenty of room on our red. Go ahead and, oh, did I, thank you. Somebody just reminded me, don't forget the belt. There's the belt, thank you so much. Okay, we'll go ahead and go to send. And I think this cardstock's just about this. No, oh, it's a little bit thicker than that green. I'm going to bump the force up just a little bit, just to make sure we get a good clean cut. And we'll go ahead and hit send. Okay, so your machine's going to go and cut out the black. And then the red, that'll take just a minute. Um, let's see. I don't believe I'm gonna cut the other colors. So go ahead and get all those other pieces cut out, including that um, envelope. So don't forget the envelope. 
and a liner. And honestly, the liner works just a little bit better out of a thinner cardstock, like a thinner, even a pattern paper instead of a thick cardstock. So just keep that in mind if, if you're gonna choose, if you're gonna cut that liner, just choose a, a thinner paper for that. That's my recommendation anyways. Okay, our machine. I'm not sure if it's done or if it's just thinking for a minute. Okay, I'm going to, oh, there we go. I'm going to say, I'm going to go ahead and unload it. Um, again, just check and make sure everything cut cleanly. And to be honest with you, this one isn't cut as clean as I would like. So I am going to run it again. So this is actually really good for you guys to see this. Even I have trouble sometimes with the first cut, but if you, if you unload it, then you've wasted your cardstock and you'd have to get, you'll never line it up. So, but it's still loaded, so we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you and back into the software. And I have my, I've already taken my blade depth up to four on here and my force is all the way up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bump my blade depth up to a five and maybe pull back a little bit on that force. I'm just kind of going one notch up. Um, I'll go ahead and speed it up just a little so it goes a little faster the second time. And we'll go ahead and send it again. I do. Um, 80 pound is a great weight for card stock, uh, for card making. Um, if you're making something that's like a 3D project, sometimes I like even 100 pound, that's pretty heavy but it just depends on what you're making. But I think 80 pounds great. I designed paper for Echo Park Paper Company and we use a 65 pound cover for all of our pattern double-sided cardstock. And that works great too. So 65 to 80 pound, somewhere in that range. If you're doing a solid, I like the 80 pound. And that's probably what we're using here. You know, the Michaels brand cardstock, those packs of um, colored cardstock are great weight. And that, that might be a 65 or 80. Okay, we do have a nice clean cut um, this time. So I'm just testing that real quick, but yeah, look how nice that came out. He's perfect. So just make sure if you're not getting perfect cuts with your cardstock, be patient, keep it loaded and resend it with a little heavier cut setting, okay? You should get perfect cuts. Okay, I'm just gonna test the red as well. Just, okay, now look, check this out. My red is not fully cut all the way through. So again, I'm gonna go back to my software. I'm, I'm, so, I'm actually really glad this is happening. So you guys get to see what it looks like when you have a cutting issue. So I've done those black pieces. I don't need to cut those again. I'm gonna pull them off. I don't want to send those again. So I'm gonna, Let's move those off with the white piece that I've already cut. We've got these two red pieces here. I'm just going to take my force up. I'm not going to take my blade depth up. I'm just going to move that force up and I'm going to send it again. Okay. I could have pulled this black off before sending it, but that's okay. So I am guessing that this red is a hundred pound. And the black is probably an 80 pound. That's my, my guess. Hey, everybody cross your fingers. Look at that. We have a perfect cut this time. Well, there's one little spot there. Okay. But he looks really, really good. That one. And then here's our, our main piece. And he looks really good too. And those eyes, they're popping out really well. Okay. So just, you've seen Lori Whitlock have trouble cutting on the first pass perfectly. So if that happens to you, it's completely normal. Don't worry, don't panic, it's okay. Okay. So now that we've cut out those pieces, you'll wanna cut out your pieces for your envelope as well. And they look like this. You've got your liner piece that's going to glue right inside of your envelope. And then the envelope piece looks like this. You're going to be able to fold that up and it'll have this cute little liner inside your envelope. Isn't that cute? Oh, and look how fun that is. There's another pattern on the back. You can get really creative with your patterns on that. So cut that out and 
I've got one of everything already cut out here. So we'll go ahead and start assembling. Does anybody have any questions with the software or how to get things cut out? Okay, if you think of something, let me know. I can always plug back in and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and move my laptop out of the way. And we'll start assembling our cute card. Yes, that is a really, really good question. Well, you don't have to. I mean, if a smaller card is going to, I mean, okay, so here's our envelope as is. Let, let me actually, okay. So there's our envelope as is with our card as is. So it's going to fit. Um, I don't have it glued yet, but you can see it's going to fit perfectly inside of that envelope. If you scale the card down, do you care if it's got a little extra room in there? Probably not. This is a pretty tight fit. So I honestly, if I took it down in 98%, you probably don't need to um, change the size of the envelope. It'd be fine. You could have, I mean, if it was even the size of that scallop piece, which is smaller, you know, it would just be a little bit of extra space around it. So, and I don't mind that at all. So there you go. That's, and especially where you've got that spring in there and that extra space for Santa. Um, I think it's fine. Okay, let's get organized here. We've got our card base. Let's start with our card. And I'm going to just put my two samples here so you can kind of follow along whatever colors you've used for all your pieces. Um, we'll fold our card base in half. And just, I like to use a bone folder just to get a nice crease on that. It is an Echo Park paper that I designed and please don't ask me which collection it's from <laughs> because I don't remember, but yes, it is. I've done a new a Christmas almost every season for the past 10 years. So I forget all the names of all of them. Christmas magic, the magic of Christmas. And I, I don't remember, lots of them. Okay, so this little guy right here is just a background piece. If you look behind here, it's glued straight down to the card base. So he's kind of like a shadow to put behind everything. You just glue that down to the card base, okay? So that's our first job is go ahead and put this pattern paper you know, you can get creative, whatever you want. I think that the green on tone on tone looks nice. So it's kind of a subtle background and Santa can really pop. You know, it, if it's too, too busy, then sometimes it doesn't have quite the same effect, but you do whatever makes you happy. So I'm just gonna use some tape runner on that piece. And we will just center that in the space. There should be about an eighth of an inch all the way around. And, oh dear, I'm a little tiny bit off, but we're gonna go with that because it's down and I'm on the screen. And, and then we've got our little Santa piece. If you'll notice, there's a little pom-pom um, for his hat. Put that on the left. It'll just be easier. Everything's cut that way. So um, just make sure you get that oriented properly. I'm gonna flip him over, add a little adhesive. Okay, little arm there. Okay. Well, if you see any of that adhesive poking through, just make sure you push it to the back before you put it down so that way, that way it doesn't show. Um, we'll just center him in the space and put him down. Okay, so that's your basic card base. Now we just need to put together his body and his little bobblehead piece. So I'm gonna separate these pieces real quick. We've got our bobblehead pieces here. That's behind his eyes to make the little white eyes show through in his face and his beard and his mustache and his teeny tiny little eyebrows. I'm sorry, guys. Please don't hate me. They're so cute, though. Look how cute they are. I mean, really. Hey, um, we've got his body. We've got his little uh, belt. And I've gone ahead and put the little gold uh, belt buckle on. 
Um, we've got little pieces for his legs and his arms and his little white middle. So let's start. I'm going to get um, my little pick me up tool because this is a handy little tool. It's a silhouette product to pick up these little bitty pieces. I hope you have one. If not, you need one because they're so handy. I use it, especially when I'm doing little things. I'm also going to get my glasses and put those on and some adhesive. And you're going to want something with a pointy little tip. I mean, this tip on this bottle, I think, is too big for these pieces. This one works quite well. And even a little tiny glue bottle that you can put like your squat, scotch quick tacky glue quick dry adhesive into that works. I like both of these options. Just for this video today, I'm going to go ahead and use this pen because it's just easy and ready to go. And I don't have to work on keeping it open. Sometimes the other one likes to clog on me. Okay, so just make sure you orient everything the right way. So notice how this curves. It's going to curve right down here at the bottom of his, I want to call it a skirt, but it's Santa. So it's got to be his coat. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a little adhesive across that. And you could put it on the back of the white piece or you can put it right here. Just go ahead and glue that down. Okay, so, oops, he's going to slide on me. Okay, if you'll notice, his little feet are on this back layer here, and his little mittens are already there too. So you don't have to worry about those parts. They're already on this shadow layer back here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and glue him down to that back layer so we can see for the rest of the placement where it goes. Okay, so there's his basic body. Let's go ahead and put his cuffs down on his feet. Two of those, put a little adhesive on each of those. Hopefully you're able to see all these little details. Okay. Pretty simple. This um, tool has a little flat edge on the other end, so you can use it to scoot things around and push them down as needed. Okay, um, now we just need his little arm cuffs. And I think these ones, the smaller ones are the cuffs for the arms and the eyebrows are a little bit bigger. Okay. I'll go ahead and put those two cuffs down. It looks worse than it is because look, we're almost done. All we have to do is add his belt now and his body will be put together. Okay, so now we just have his little belt that goes right through the middle here. And then you'll see that's all he has, that's done. Okay, I don't want that to fall on my project, so I'm going to glue it while it's on the table. Got just a little too much there. I don't want it to leak out the sides. Okay. There we go. Hey, we're going to set that aside and let it dry while we work on his face. Okay, so for his face, we have. The very back layer is going to be the little bit of white that pokes through those eyes. And if that's not, if those eyes are not cut big enough for you, you can take a little pin or something in there and just kind of open those up really well, maybe enlarge them just a tiny bit so that the white shows through. I'm just trying to think if, you, if that hook is okay. These little glue bottle tips would work pretty good. Just run those through there and just kind of open them up good. Okay, then we're just gonna flip him over. Make sure again that you've got your little um, pom-pom oriented in the upper left direction. And we'll, I have this rectangle piece around the eyes that we're just gonna put down right there. So that is your back layer, okay? And if you're adding googly eyes, guess what? You won't even see those, so. 
if you're adding googly eyes, you could eliminate a little bit of this um, just for, you know, if you're mass producing them or something. But if you're not going to use the googly eyes, they'll be cute eyes anyways. So now we're going to put the red layer down. That's going to be the top of his hat and his little nose showing through. I'm just going to flip that over. And I've tried to design this in really easy layers for you to put together so it's not too hard um, to glue lots of little pieces on. I try. Sometimes it's like almost impossible to eliminate little pieces, but I do try. Okay. So if you'll notice on the back, that black layer is ever so slightly smaller, like a millimeter or so. So just make sure it's centered from the back and that the black doesn't show through. And if you feel like you need to use like some weight to hold um, him down as you go, you can, or just when you're all done. Okay, next we're gonna add his white layer and we're gonna add his face, but I don't wanna do the face till I get, let's see. Actually, I do want to do his face. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do actually with his face is I'm going to glue him to the back of that mustache because his mustache pokes up over the face. So we're going to flip that over and I'm just going to put a tiny bit of glue to anchor it down here on the mustache area. And the top of the face should totally line up with that space. So we're really just trying to kind of anchor that in its spot. Hold that, let it dry. And we'll flip that whole piece over and glue it down. You could also leave the glue out of that mustache area and slip the face under there if you need to, whatever works for you. Okay, the nice thing about all of these layers, it's gonna add a little bit of weight to Santa's head so that he works really well on that bobble head piece. Okay, just line him up and his eyes should show through just right. And you can kind of scooch things around the way they need to. And I'm gonna add bobble head, bobble eyes or Google eyes to him. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about the eye area. Okay, at this point, we have our little pom-pom that's going to go on the, this area. We have his mustache and his two eyebrows, and that's it. So how are we doing on time? We have time. I'm going to show you guys how to add a cute sentiment to this card because it didn't come with one. So I'm actually going to use a little scrap paper to get rid of a little bit of this extra glue. Sometimes I get a little bit too much glue. And that would be one thing I would caution you about with paper crafting is don't, don't use too much glue because it can really cause problems. Um, well, you, you definitely want to put it under something heavy to dry. So, I mean, I'm not having any trouble with this guy buckling but I have had glue do that to me before. So I just always put it under something heavy, like a heavy book or something and let things dry and that'll flatten it back out typically. And if you're really having buckling problems, try using less glue in general, that can help. Um, you can try a different glue. I don't know what you're using, um, but you know, finding the right glues. I do, I do like that scotch quick dry tacky glue. And I will tell you tape runners, some of them do lift over time. So I do prefer glues in general, like a liquid adhesive. Just trying to not get too much glue on this because I don't want it to buckle and I don't want it oozing out around the edges. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Oops. And okay. So we've got his mustache on. Now we just need to add his eyebrows. Before we do eyebrows, let's go ahead and look at the googly eyes though, because I don't want to get them in the wrong place. So first we're going to open up these 10 millimeter googly eyes. I think they might be a little bit big for Santa. They work perfectly 
on some of these other projects. Like he, they're so cute on the cute little reindeer. These are the larger ones. These are 10 millimeters. So I don't know. What do you think? Ooh, they're kind of cute on Santa. What do you think, guys? <laughs> He's a little bit more cartoon character that way. Or we can do the smaller ones, which are like these ones up here. Let's, I don't know. Let's have a vote. Who says big googly eyes? Who says small? Big eyes. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. We're going to do the big ones. Okay. So there's quite a recessed pocket in this eye. So I'm going to put some glue in there and a little bit around the outer edge. We'll go ahead and put that eyeball on and hope that it gets enough adhesive contact. Okay, it's done. He has big googly eyes. So now you can see, see three examples. You can see him with big eyes, little eyes, and no googly eyes. Okay, now we'll put on his eyebrows, which are tiny. I'm sorry. I think I got enough adhesive. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, maybe not. Let's just put some right here. Come on, little. Oh, there we got kind of a lot. Let's clean up some of that. I don't want too much in there. That's another thing. You'll definitely want a glue that dries clear. So if you have excess glue, it won't be a problem. Okay, there's one eyebrow. Here's another eyebrow. Okay, and we're gonna let him dry really well because I put a lot of glue under those eyes. So I'm just gonna set him off to the side and we will come back and add the spring here in just a little bit. So we'll just set these up here. Um, let's put together the envelope real quick. Here's the pieces all cut out fresh. Here's the envelope liner already attached in the middle section. We just need to attach this top section. So we'll go ahead and finish this one up. Um, with the Cricut Joy, so the Cricut Joy's uh, maximum width is like four and a half. So you would have a really hard time cutting this envelope. That's too big. You wouldn't be able to do that for sure. Um, you, this is a four and a quarter. So you could probably cut the scalloped edge and all the pieces for Santa, but you wouldn't be able to cut the card base or the envelopes. So that. Hopefully that answers your question. Absolutely. You can cut this on a portrait um, with ease, no problem. Cause you can fit, I cut everything on eight and a half by 11 or smaller. So a portrait can fit a full sheet of eight and a half by 11 on there. And as you can see, the envelope will easily fit on that eight and a half by 11 and all the other pieces. So, Hopefully that answers your question. You can do this on a cameo and a portrait easily. Okay, so once you have that liner put in, you just have those two side tabs. You just need to glue those. So I'm actually just gonna use some tape runner because then we won't have to wait for it to dry. Oh, and I got a little extra. Just have to rub that extra adhesive off of there. They make a little gummy and I don't have it with me. I wish I did. I could show you um, a little piece. It's like a gummy tool that like rubs off extra adhesive. I love that thing and I use it. I mean, sometimes use my fingers too, but so there's your envelope. A homemade, a home crafted envelope and card. So fun. Okay, actually, while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and put the, the bobble, the, the bobblehead mechanism on. This is a spring. This is a card making spring. I showed those to you earlier in class. If you missed that, go back and watch it on the replay. Um, I like to put the heavy part of the spring down on the card. All right, just right there in the middle. Don't have to worry too much about it, but as long as it's behind Santa's head, you could put it on the face part first if you want. And then I take the light side 
which is just this thin cellophane. You can see it's just real light. The heavier parts back there, it's like a thick plastic. And then I just like to line up. I sent it and I apologize. I'm gonna have to look straight down on this to get it right. And I'm just lining up with that black shadow underneath. And that's one of the reasons why I put that shadow there so that you'd have that as a guide as to where to put his head. And look how fun Santa is. And I do love the googly eyes being big. Those are really fun. And here he is with a little smaller eyes. And here he is with the eyes cut on your machine. Okay, so what I was thinking we could do, because we have just a few more minutes, is I'll show you how to make a sentiment to put inside the card. Because this card didn't come with a sentiment. Some of them do, some of them don't. So let's set these cards up here back where they go. Whoopsie. And we'll, I'll bring up my computer again. Oh my goodness. He doesn't want to stand up. His eyes are too big. <laughs> okay. Those two are used to standing up. So we'll put those back up. And we got our cute envelope we made here too. Okay. So what I was thinking is um, adding a custom sentiment to a card is a lot of fun, especially at the holidays. Let me go ahead and plug my computer back in here. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. I'm going to go back into the software. And back onto, uh oh, not that. <laughs> Don't, sorry. I was just trying to click the design tab. And just, we'll go to a new document that's just blank. Okay, so if you want to make a sentiment to go in the card, um, I would use the print and cut feature. So you don't need to go buy a bunch of stamps. You can do this with your silhouette and your printer at home. Um, go ahead and let's change this to eight and a half by 11 because my printer is letter sized. Um, and then let's go ahead over to the third tab over. This is the page setup window. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that. It's this top little page looking icon here on your software on the right hand side. Open that up. So change that to letter, change this to on the third tab over, change the registration marks to on. So now you're set up to do a print and cut. You could find a myriad of cute phrases in the Silhouette store um, to put inside a card, or you can just type one of your own. For instance, let's just type in Merry Christmas. Okay, so you can't see that very well. I'm gonna go ahead and colorize that all black so you can see it. And I'm gonna turn off the red outline because I don't want to cut around it. Okay, and then you can change it to any font you have loaded on your computer. So you could just play around with whatever fonts you like. And over on the right-hand side, there's a more robust um, font text style menu here. Um, you can change the line spacing and the center you can justify it to the center instead of to the left or right you can change the line spacing to be closer or farther away okay so then you can size this to whatever size you want you could even go and i'm just gonna wing it here i don't know what i have in my library but i'm sure i have some sort of a bracket shape so i'm going to type in bracket okay so you could go get a little bracket label shape like this one right here I'm just gonna ungroup and you can bring that onto your mat. So this is, you can see how easy it is to just design your own little label to put in or a little sentiment to put in your card. Okay, so now you have those ready to go. And at this point you would just go ahead and hit print. Actually, you need to turn that red line off so you don't print the red. So click the line um, color window up here, top left, it's the red box. Click that and then choose none for the color around it. It's still there. And if you need to see it, go ahead and go to the fill color and change it to white and then right click it and send it to the back. So now you can see it a little bit better. Um, but you could go ahead and hit print, send this to your printer to print. And it's just gonna find your printer that you have at home. Um, Let's see, go ahead and hit print here. You can see that it's gonna put those, so you choose your printer. I always feed from my rear tray and I load cardstock in the rear tray and it's going to print your sentiment and those marks in the corner. 
and your machine's going to find those marks and it'll cut around that bracket when we send it to print to cut but right now you're just printing so you're going to see three marks and merry christmas on your paper and i went ahead and printed one out so we will cut that and mine looks just a little bit different let me just open that what's that point them out okay let's go back over to that design screen okay on this on this screen when i turned on under page style it's got um when you turn those registration marks on and off you'll see the three registration marks but you'll also see this gray hatching area let's zoom in a little bit can you see the gray hashed out area you don't want to place anything in that area so if i were to cross that over that that wouldn't work out very well you wouldn't be able to cut past that red line and if there's any ink past the into that um gray cross hatched area it's going the optical eye in your machine is going to see that m on mary or those letters and think that that's part of this registration mark so you don't want to be in that area just make sure you keep all of your artwork clear of that and if you are mass producing your christmas cards i'm going to group this together so it's a little bit big right now so i'm going to scale that down a little group it together well you could center it too look all these fun tools we need to learn you can center it on the page you can center did you see this little you can select both pieces and click the center tool and it'll center it for you left and right and up and down and then i'm going to group it command g and then if you go over to your replicate window you can fill the whole page with it so you can fit eight of them on a page um, and be able to make christmas cards actually if you hand move these around you can probably fit a lot more than eight on there and you would do that by just scooting them closer together and you don't have to be real particular about how much space is between just whatever works for you they can go closer together won't hurt anything um can scoot see that red line all the way to the side as long as i stay out of that cross hatch area and don't pass the red line i could fit another whole row here and i'm just selecting the right row pressing command and right arrow it's making another row for me and i'm scooting it over a little so there's a little space so you can see how when you manually do it you can probably fit a few extra on there okay so i have gone ahead and saved one in my library that i've pre-printed right here mine looks just a little different and i didn't fill those with white so you can't see them i'm going to go ahead and let me ungroup real quick and oh, i should have grabbed them all at once ungroup let me fill that with white so you can see them are the ones we did in class are way more exciting because they have little bracket shapes but these are just rectangles and i did that with just a little rectangle tool right here on the side just drew a rectangle, filled it with white, and put my words on top, and I printed it out. So let's stop screen sharing real quick. And I'm going to take that printed piece that I have for my printer and load it on my mat. So I actually have to clean up my mat just a little bit here. Pull those pieces off. And I've got my little spatula tool here, which is super handy as well. If you don't have one of those, you need one. They're handy. Helps you get things off of your mat. If you don't have one, you can use like a little piece of hard plastic or credit card or something like that, old credit card. Okay. So now that our mat's clean, I'm just going to take my print and cut, put it up in the upper left-hand corner of my mat, just like it is on my virtual mat on my screen. Go ahead and press that down and load it into my machine. Line it up and press load. Okay, make sure that that little square is in the upper left-hand corner. You don't want it in another orientation or your machine's not going to cut in the right places. Okay, so back into the software real quick. And we'll go to the send panel. Okay, look at this mess. We do not want to cut around all those letters. So you wanna make sure you grab everything. I'm gonna group it, Command G, and I'm just gonna do cut edge. See how that highlights just those squares or rectangles, I should say? That's what I want. Okay, 
we're going to go ahead and get this ready to send. So let's look at our um, textured cardstock. We have that set on. Why are we? Oh, it's because my machine. I was like, why is my blade depth? Okay, look, I plugged my machine in and now it's going to give me my blade depth. Did you see that for a second? It wasn't there. So make sure your machine's plugged in before you try and set everything up or you're going to be looking at it going, what's wrong? Okay, it happens to all of us. It does. Okay, textured cardstock. Um, I definitely want to go up to, this is probably at least a four, let's do four and let's go all the way up on our force and add some speed and we'll go ahead and hit send. So because I have those registration marks on my screen on this file and I printed it with them, it's gonna go and locate those when I hit send. I don't need to do anything else to tell it it's a printing cut, it knows. So it's locating those right now. It found the square. Now it's looking for that bottom left-hand L shape. And now the top right-hand one. Okay, now it's gonna go set the blade depth. And then it's gonna go cut around my little labels. Hey, you have to admit, this is a super awesome way to make tags for Christmas add sentiments to cards. Um, in the Silhouette store, I have a gazillion, is that a word, gazillion? A uh, gazillion tag shapes. So you can go grab a tag shape, make a custom tag, you know, Merry Christmas from our house to yours and put your family name on it. I do that almost every year because then I don't have to like handwrite on every single one of them. And our machine is just taking its time thinking for a moment. Let's check that. As soon as I can check it. Okay, there we go. Now we do have a perfect cut. I'm just going to pull one of those off so you can see we got a perfect little Merry Christmas. So let's just take a look at what that would look like inside our card. So here's our cute little card. You could just glue that right inside to make a little Merry Christmas sentiment inside. Look how fun that is. And we need to get our one with our big googly eyes. Where's he at? Here he is. Hey, you guys, I hope you had fun making this card today. I had fun making it with you. If you have any more questions, now is your chance to ask. If not, um, we will finish up class. Make sure that you come back and watch this on the Michael's YouTube channel. If you've missed anything or you need to review anything, it'll be there um, indefinitely as soon as they load it up in about 24 to 48 hours. Um, Tomorrow, there'll be another fun card. So make sure you go and sign up for that at the Michaels website um, as they do their 12 days of card making. Um, I believe it's gonna be something to do with markers or coloring. So there's so many fun card making techniques. I absolutely love it. Hope you guys do too. Do we have any last minute questions, Christina? Okay, you guys, hope you had fun making this fun bobblehead card with me and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.